Hello everyone. Uh, welcome you back for the further discussions on the topic of FRL. FRL is nothing but the filter, regulator and lubrication. See here these are the three basic elements which are required in, in the system. As you know that the filters are provided both at the compressor inlet and also in the pneumatic line before the before the walls or the actuators. Why these filters are needed? The filters are needed to remove the dust particles from the uh, from the air or even uh, in some cases there may be a chances of humidity also. Even those things it should be removed removed from the air what we are using in the system. For that reason only the filters are used before the before the compressor before the compressor and also before the wall or before the actuators the intake filters are mostly uh, a paper type or elements which prevents the entry of the atmospheric contaminants into the compressor and minimizing the damage to the compressor components the other filter is termed as a airline filter is used in the pneumatic line which removes the contaminants the mainly the dirt and also the moisture the airline filters protects the pneumatic control wall and other devices by corrosion next one the air dryers the air filters can o can only remove the condensed water particles from the air uh, the vapors passes passes through the air filter and causes the problem uh, as it condenses at the other components in the compressor air is the relative humidity and, uh, and the dew point are higher both the relative humidity and also dew points are depends upon the temperature and also the pressure when the temperature drops or when the pressure is increased the water start condensing it the problem can be reduced by keeping the humidity uh, below the 100 percent for which the air dryers are used in the line the next part is nothing but the lubricators unlike in the case of the hydraulic systems the what we can say the raw material or the element what we are using using as the hydraulic oils in the case of the hydraulic system which is which is a, ha, developing a pressure and also using as a lubricators for the moving parts or it may be a moving components that to especially the actuators but here in this case well, what we are using is nothing but a pneumatic or the air the pneumatic systems cannot provide a lubricate lubrication effectively because because as we know that because of the compression or the high pressures there may be a rise in temperature the, the rise in temperature may remove the lubrication or the lubricants which is there in the in the moving parts the generally oil is in the form of a fine mist is added to clean dry air during the secondary treatment for this air lubricators are used the air pressure regulators air pressure regulators is a basic element or the what we can say the base nece necessary in the line the pneumatic system the flow velocity uh, are quite higher which may leads to a considerable pressure drop between the air receiver and the loading point hence the common practice to maintain the high pressure in the reservoir than that of the required at the actuators if the if there is a, any pressure drop in the actuator that it is compensated by flowing the excess of air from the reservoir for that reason only the air regulators is required in between the what we can say the dcv walls dcv walls and also the actuators or before the dcv walls also the air regulators it can be used the required pressures and the loading point is then achieved using a pressure regulators locally using the air pressure regulators the air pressure regulators are similar to a pressure reducing walls used in the hydraulic systems the pressure regulator is a pneumatic system are used to adjust the supply of the pressure to a required level for a given load irrespective of the airflow 
to maintain a constant pressure at the load end or at the application end if the air flow is higher it is it senses the pressure and reduces the flow to the required level to maintain the pressure similarly if the supply pressure drops the regulator increases the flow rate so that the increase in pressure on the uh, required level is maintained for that reason only the air regulators is a another basic components which is essential in the line the next part what we are discussing is nothing but the actuators even these actuators also we are discussed the same way even in the uh, hydraulic circuits also now here the actuator or the output device which converts the pressurized energy or the what we can say the either it may be a pneumatic or it may be the hydraulic into a actuation or the motion or to a mechanical energy in general the hydraulic or the pneumatic systems are used for a gripping or to moving operation in the industry these operations are carried out by using the actuators only the classification of the air cylinders see for the actuators even even here the basic components for the actuator is nothing but the air cylinder the linear pneumatic cylinders uh, popularly known as the air cylinders are used for the generation of the straight rectilinear motion thus they are useful to move an object or to apply the force on an object in a straight line the pneumatic cylinders are uh, basically classified as follows the first one is nothing but the single acting cylinder the single acting cylinder is a basic cylinder what we are used in most of the applications the second one is nothing but a spring retent cylinder the spring retent cylinder is a cylinder where the movement movement is in one direction that is by the help of the air pressure or by means of the hydraulic pressure while the retent stroke is accomplished by means of the spring but in the case of the single acting cylinder the springs it won't be there for that reason the movement movement or the reverse stroke is done by using the gravity itself the ram cylinder the ram cylinder is a a cylinder rod itself which is in the form of a mobile element the term as a ram and it is usually a single acting and a and a written stroke is either under the gravity or by assisted by means of a written cylinder the double acting cylinders double acting cylinders is which having a uh, its its pressure is applied in a alternative side by which the movement of the piston is is done by means of the pneumatic air or by means of the hydraulic pressure only the double rod or the through rod cylinder this is a, this is another type of the what we can say the cylinder which is having a double rod at the both the ends the movement of the movement of the piston is actuated by means of the pneumatic or by means of the hydraulic the piston rods extends or retracts on either side of the cylinder the rodless cylinders the rodless cylinders is is uh, there is no rod connected to the connected to the piston usually the piston is a magnetic type while the external follower follower follows the piston due to the magnetic coupling the diaphragm cylinder the diaphragm cylinder is a short storage length or the short stroke length a small cylinders with a rubber or a metallic diaphragm is used instead of the piston the main advantages of such cylinders is that there is no leakage between the what we can say the inlet and as well as the outlet chamber and there is no friction losses also